Hi guys, welcome once again to the Coffin Heroes YouTube channel. It's going to be a bit of a special one today. I had promised that I was going to go through the upcoming DC Future State event and break everything down for people, let them know what to expect. So that's what we're here for today. Uh, before I get started, I do just want to say uh, a big massive thank you to sort of the Coffin Heroes community. Uh, as you know from the last video, my, recently my grandmother passed away and there's been a really great outpouring of support and nice messages of support and so forth. So I just want to say thank you. All those messages are really appreciated. All those people checking in with us has been massively appreciated. As you'd expect, Vicky's been an absolute rock as well the whole time and, you know, been looking after the store. I've had a few days at home. So, uh, you know, we have the funeral this week. We'll get a chance to pay our final respects and go from there. But again, I just wanted to throw it out there. I really do appreciate uh, the, the support and the warmth and everything else from the Coffee and Heroes community. So massive thanks for that, guys. But uh, as I say, I'm going to focus primarily on the DC Future State stuff today. There'll be a, hopefully a show as normal at the weekend. We'll go through all the pop culture stuff and comics this week and invoicing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I might throw in a wee bonus CGC thing at the end here as we did receive another uh, few slabs back just to show you some of the things. We did send off another uh, batch of 25 there the other day and there's another 25 going this weekend so uh, the, the service has proven really really popular. But DC Future State, so what is there to know? So DC Future State is going to be a line wide two month event. So essentially what this is going to be is in January and February DC are going to stop all of their ongoing titles for two months. So your ongoing titles are the likes of your Batman, Detective Comics, Superman, Wonder Woman, Justice League, Justice League Dark, uh, all the Flash, all these ongoing titles will be stopped for two months. My, uh, my sort of take on it is that what they want to do is they want to give the creators on those titles a little bit of... Um, a little bit of space so that they can work and get ahead on those titles so that they can continue to ship on time. Now what this does mean is that the mini series and maxi series that are coming out, uh, so things like Batcat from Tom Keane and Clayman, which by the way, really, really can't wait for, things like Rorschach, things like Strange Adventures, uh, these sort of titles that are have a finite amount of issues that come out, they will still come out as normal in January and February. So you'll have those and then you'll have Future State. So Future State, what it's going to be is it's going to be a mixture of different comics. There's going to be uh, mini series, there's going to be uh, oversized issues, and there's going to be one shots, things like that. And the idea of it, it's going to present uh, future and also alternate versions of classic DC characters. It's essentially going to spin out of metal. So the way metal's going to end, obviously we're not sure about it. It comes to an end, I believe, the last week in December. So it'll come out and then this is the, the aftermath, so to speak. <clears throat> so it'll take place at a few different time, uh, future time periods. So the thing, first of all, to, to note here is that they're not all connected per se. Uh, it's not a case of part one's going to be on one title, part two is going to be on another. I would imagine there will be some crossover between the events. But it's not a case of you either get none of this or you get all of this. I think it's a case of following either characters you enjoy or creators you enjoy. So that's the first thing to, to note here. It's not a case of you have to get all of these titles to understand. So uh, what apparently it is going to do is it is going to lay some of the groundwork for future series as well. Uh, so DC executive editor Marie Javins revealed that not only were seeds planted for the upcoming event in current series, but Future State will lay some of the groundwork as well. It's a case of, uh, to quote her, she said, when the event begins in January, some savvy readers will not only pick up some of the breadcrumbs that have already been tossed out in our current titles, but they will also find new hints and clues of what's to come in 2021. So there, there's things to look forward to. It will set up some stuff um, for the future as well. How much that's going to be, I don't know. I think it's just going to be a case of waiting for the titles and seeing. But it'll be fun to see some nice little Easter eggs in there, that kind of thing. So in terms of creative teams, so it's going to feature some favourite DC creators in there. So it still sounds weird saying DC creators such as Brad Michael Bendis. I just still associate him with Marvel. Uh, but it's going to have the likes of Mariko Tamaki, Joel Jones, Joshua Williamson, Cully Hamner, Nicholas Scott. 
There's also going to be a bunch of new creators coming on to this as well. So you've got John Ridley coming on to do the next Batman. John Ridley is, of course, a Oscar winning screenwriter. Uh, he's going to be doing the next Batman, as I say. But you're also going to have some creators you've maybe not heard of too much at this point. So the likes of Brandon Vietti, Brandon Easton, Megan Fitzmartin, Aletha Martinez, Paula Sevenbergen, and Sia Um, among others. So it might even be a case of as well as enjoying the work of creators that you like you may discover your next favorite creator as well. So one thing that is going to uh, change a little bit as well, it's gonna introduce new characters to the DC universe and also the Trinity is gonna be getting an overhaul. So uh, with, with regards to the Trinity, so of course you've got Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. So Diana will be passing on the role of Wonder Woman, but she will still appear in the far future, but she will be passing on the identity. Superman has been exiled from Earth, so you would imagine someone will take over there. Is it going to be Superboy Prime? Is it going to be, you know, his son, Jonathan, something like that? And um, Bruce Wayne, well, I believe Bruce Wayne's going to be in the Batman title, The Dark Detective. And then the next Batman is going to be someone taking over Mantle of the Bat, essentially. So, yeah, uh, so that's something to look forward to. You've got um, all the Bat family are going to be outlaw characters in it, which is really uh, interesting. You're going to have Nightwing, you're going to have... So you're going to have some fan favourites coming back as well. So you're going to have the likes of Cassandra Cain, Stephanie Brown, Grifter, that, those kind of characters. But you'll also have those classic Bat Family characters such as Red Hood, such as Batgirl, and as I was saying before, Nightwing and so forth. Um, the interesting thing with Superman is that the Superman family are divided uh, in Future State. So... Essentially, the titles themselves are going to be broken down into Bat Family, Superman Family, Justice League Family. So, with uh, with regards to the Super Family, so you've got so Jonathan Kent and Kal El will star in their respective Superman titles, and Wonder Woman and New and Old will be joining the family as well. So Diana will star as the last surviving member of the DC Trinity in Immortal Wonder Woman. Uh, Yana Floor will star in her own title and alongside John in Superman Wonder Woman. So again, you've got your two sort of legacy characters being taken over there. Uh, you've got Kara Zor-El, Superwoman, Guardian, Mr. Miracle, uh, Midnighter, Black Racer, Legion of Superheroes. These are all going to be characters that pop up in the, uh, the Justice League titles. Uh, and, but there will be an all new Justice League, you know, incorporating some of those characters, but also some new characters coming on there as well. It's also going to be filled with new villains as well. So it, it's an interesting event in a way. I mean, I'm looking forward to it just because it's a new take on these established characters, these established heroes. You'll no doubt have your speculators as well who will be seeing multiple first appearances through Future State. It's obviously too early to guess which titles they're all going to pop up in, but <clears throat> it's definitely something worth keeping an eye on in terms of first appearances of uh, new heroes and new villains as well. So what titles can we look forward to from Future State? So as I was saying, it is going to be broken up into essentially oversized comics, monthly miniseries, and then it's going to be divided by um, Bat Family, Superman Family, and Justice League Family, and then all other banners fall under that. So oversized comics. So what this means is you're going to have one main story through the oversized comics, but you're also going to have backup stories in those as well. Uh, so for the Batman, for example, so the next Batman is an oversized comic. So you're going to have the next Batman main story, which is by John Ridley, the aforementioned uh, Oscar winning screenwriter, and Nick Darrington and Laura Braga on art duties there. Uh, so Nick Darrington, you may know from Batman Universe, uh, six issue mini series he did with Bram Michael Bendis. But you're also going to have these backup stories. So, so far they've announced in issue one, you'll have Outsiders and Arkham Knight, so two backup stories. And then in issue two, you're gonna have Batgirls and Gotham City Sirens as backup stories. So the creative teams on these, so for Outsiders and Arkham Knights, you've got Brandon Thomas and Sumit Karmar for Outsiders, and you've got Paul Jenkins and Jack Herbert for Arkham Knights. Then when it comes to Batgirls, you've got Vita Ayala and Aneke, and on Gotham City Sirens, you have Paula Sevenbergen and Emanuela Lupicino. So that's one Bat Family title. The other one that falls under oversized comics is Dark Detective. 
Now, if I had to say there was one I was looking forward to most, it's Dark Detective because I like the idea of seeing a future Bruce Wayne, seeing how he's evolved with the times. Um, I'm looking forward to the next Batman as well because someone new taking over the mantle, but I love me some Bruce Wayne and stuff. So uh, Dark Detective, the main series, and this is the other reason I'm really looking forward to it. Great creative team here. So you've got Mariko Tamaki on writing duties and then Dan Mora on art. I've been pushing on Dan Mora to do a Batman title for I don't know how long. Love Once in Future. Did great work with Power Rangers. He had a, a short story in Detective 1027 that he, he illustrated. And I just love his art style. So I'm really looking forward to that. But issue one of Dark Detective. Um, I should have said as well, sorry, with the oversized comics, the next Batman and Dark Detective. They're going to be four issues in total over January and February. So you're going to have fortnightly. Forward. So they're essentially replacing Batman and Detective Comics for the months of January and February. But Dark Detective, uh, issue one is going to have a backup story of Grifters. And Dark Detective is going to have a backup story number two of The Red Hood. And you want to talk Dream Teams again here. Grifters, Matthew Rosenberg, who does such great work with Marvel. Haven't seen him on a lot of DC titles, so again, this is fun to look forward to. He's on writing duties along with Carmine Di Gian Domenico on art. And then with Dark Detective number two, the backup story, as I say, was The Red Hood. And it's written by Joshua Williamson, who's just embarked on an epic flash run. And the artist on this one is Giannis Milena Giannis, who I'm not overly familiar with, I have to admit. But then you're also going to have monthly miniseries within the Bat family. So these are essentially um, standard size comics. They're not oversized like the first four. But these ones will be monthly, so they'll just be two issues. So one in January, one in February. So in terms of this, you've got Batman Superman, which is by Jean Lun Yang and Ben Oliver on art. Ben Oliver on interiors, I think is a big get there. You don't see an awful lot of that. You have probably the one I'm looking forward to most in terms of the creative team as well, as well as the Dark Detective. This is the other one, and that's Future State Catwoman because Ram V is on writing and Otto Schmidt on art. Anyone who watches this channel, the last video I posted, I... I you know, wax lyrical for as long as I could about Blue and Green, which is an amazing Ram V title, original graphic novel that just came out. And Otto Schmidt did great work, not only in Green Arrow and Rebirth, but also did great work with Hawkeye Freefall. Then the other ones you've got within the Bat family for monthly is Harley Quinn by Stephanie Phillips and Simone DeMeo. Nightwing by Andrew Constant and Nicholas Scott. Another great grab there for art. Nicholas Scott's art is awesome. Robin Eternal by Megan Fitzmartin and Eddie Barrows. So that's the Bat family. Then you have the Superman family. So again, you've got your oversized comics and you've got your monthly mini series and one shots. So with regards to the oversized comics for Superman, now these are divided between two issues and four issues. So I'll just go through them one by one. So the first one you've got is Superman of Metropolis. So again, oversized comic. So the main story is Superman of Metropolis by Sean Lewis and John Timms. And then you're going to have two backup stories in this. So you've got The Guardian by Sean Lewis and Cully Hamner and Mr. Miracle by Brandon Easton and Valentin Delandro. So that's going to be two um, That's going to be two issues. So that's going to be monthly Superman of Metropolis. You then have Superman Worlds of War. Now with this one, this is going to be four issues. So this will be fortnightly in January and February. So the main story is Superman Worlds of War by Philip Kennedy Johnson and Mikael Yannon. That is a hell of a team as well. And then the backup stories in this one are going to be Midnighter by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad and Gleb Melnikov. You have Black Racer by Jeremy Adams and Sia Ohm. Mr. Miracle by Brandon Easton and Valentin Delandro. Then you have also Falling Under the Superman family is actually Immortal Wonder Woman. Uh, this one is going to be two issues, so again this will be monthly. This is oversized, so the main uh, story is Immortal Wonder Woman by Becky Cloonan, Michael W. Conrad, and Jem Bartel. Really big fan of Jem Bartel's art as well. And then this is going to have uh, backup stories, which are uh, Nubia by L.L. McKinney, Aletha E. Martinez, and Mark Morales. So that moves you away. Those are your, all your oversized ones for Superman. Then you've got your monthly miniseries and one-shots. So what you've got here is Future State House of L., by Philip Kennedy Johnson and Scott Golowski. That's a one shot and that's out in February. You then have your uh, monthly mini series, which is Kara Zorel Superwoman by Marguerite Bennett and Marguerite Savage. 
You have Legion of Superheroes by Brian Michael Bendis and Riley Rossmo. You have Future State Superman Wonder Woman by Dan Waters and Leila Del Duca. Then you have Future State Superman vs. Imperius Lex. This one slightly breaks the, the mold a little bit because it's actually going to be three issues and it's going to end in March. So it's actually going to carry over from January to March. That's written by Mark Russell and art by Steve Pooh, who's doing great art in Wonder Woman at the moment. And then you've also got another monthly mini series, which is Future State Wonder Woman by Joelle Jones. So she must be on writing and art duties. Has uh, been really good in the recent Catwoman run. So then we move on to the Justice League family, which is essentially going to encase everything else in the DC universe for DC Future State. So what you're going to have here, so you've got your oversized comics. So again, these are monthly. Uh, let me just see. Yep. So these are all going to be two issues each. So monthly, oversized. And they're going to have your main story and then your backup story. So you've got Future State Justice League, number one. This is written by Joshua Williamson and art by Robson Rocca. And then your backup story there is Justice League Dark by Ram V and Marcio Takara. You then have Green Lantern, monthly miniseries. Oversized, you've got Last Lanterns by Jeffrey Thorne and Tom Rainey will be the main story. And then you've got Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, which will be the backup stories. And those are by Josie Campbell, Ran Cady, Ernie Altbacker, Sammy Basri, and Clayton Henry. And then one last one that falls under the oversized banner is Future State Suicide Squad 1 and 2, again monthly. So the main story is Suicide Squad by Robbie Thompson and Javi Fernandez. And then you have your backup story in that one of Black Adam by Jeremy Adams and Fernando Passar. So then we have your monthly mini-series, and this is to finish off Future State. So you've got five different titles here. These are all monthly mini-series, so no backup stories, standard comic size, going to be two issues each. So you've got Future State Aquaman by Brandon Thomas and Daniel Sampier. Future State The Flash by Brandon Vietti and Dale Eaglesham. Future State Teen Titans by Tim Sheridan and Rafa Sandoval. Future State Shazam by Tim Sheridan and Eduardo Pansica. And Future State Swamp Thing by Ram V and Mike Perkins. That is a team as well. So that, in a nutshell, is DC Future State. Two-month line-wide event, mixture of oversized comics, monthly mini-series, and one-shots. Again, I can't emphasize, you don't need them all. If there are certain characters you like or certain creative teams you like, those are the ones to go for. Uh, the other thing I should say is that we are not going to be one of those stores that just automatically puts things on your pull list. Just because you're on Batman and Detective doesn't mean we're going to put you down for Batman and Detective equivalents, if you will, in this. Not everybody's going to be in the future state. Some people are going to be into it that aren't into the normal stuff. So I can't emphasize enough that if things appeal to you, get in touch with us and let us know what you want us to put on the pull lists. Ordering for this is going to be all over the place. Uh... DC haven't made it easy for retailers for the start of the year. But there is also going to be some uh, some things sent out, I believe, in the next couple of weeks where they're going to be like little samplers, uh, break further breakdowns of all the titles. The main order is due in, in the next couple of weeks, so do let us know as soon as you can. As ever, we'll get the chance to top up a month down the line, so in early December. But again, I can't emphasize it enough. We are not going to automatically put anything on your pull list. You have to let us know what you want because I, I don't know how big or how small this is going to be. Uh, a lot of people love their ongoings. They don't want things to change. A lot of people want to see change. So it's, it's going to appeal to a whole different market. But again, let us know what you'd like us to order for you. Uh, and again, I'll always have the um, iPad in store. We can look up DC Connect. We can take you through it as well. I should say as well, if you want to look all this up at home in slightly more detail, just go to DC Connect, C O. Double N E C T, and you'll find the latest DC Connect previews book on there. I believe it's issue six, and it will break down all of these as well. So again, let you know a bit more detail, let you know about the creative teams and so forth. But for now, that's all of our stuff on DC Future State. So I hope it's proved helpful. I hope it's clarified a few things for those who are unsure or slightly on the fence. But again, let us know what you'd like us to order. So on to some CGC stuff. We do love a big CGC box. So again, this was the last of our delivery to come back. So these were mostly titles that were either older titles pre-1975, which take a little bit longer to grade, 
or they were ones that were getting special banners put on them that again take that little bit extra time so i'm just going to show you again it's just to let you guys see the sort of things people are sending off it's uh, a way for you to see the finished product a bit more there are one or two that i know people don't want the grade revealed so again i'll not uh i'll not reveal too much but let's see what do we got here first so this is actually one for myself so i'm more than happy to show it off uh, so what we've got here is Venom 2099. Uh, this is the Otto Schmidt, there he is again, uh, variant for this, which has proven quite the hot issue at the moment. Uh, you'll notice at the top here, this is what I mean by uh, the new, uh, new labels for the top. So you'll see all the information is going off to the side, and then you'll have your uh, character over to the side here. It only seems to be Marvel so far, DC aren't really doing it, at least at the moment. But if, there, if it's an extra thing you'd like done, it, there is an extra cost to it. But do get in touch if there's ones that you'd like to see. Um, or, or if you'd like to see the full sort of library of what ones they're doing, actually. Uh, you may have remembered one in the last show, which was uh, there was a spectacular Spider-Man issue that was exceptionally shiny. Uh, we've also got an amazing Spider-Man one as well. So 9.4 for that. So again, I don't know how well the shininess comes across. And then if I flip it... It's a double cover issue, so these look great. And again, this is one with the new Spider-Man label put on just the side here. And they also add some stuff to the back as well. So I really like the, the extra banner style on that. This is one I know if a lot of people were waiting to see what grade this would come back at. I'm afraid you're gonna have to wait a little longer on that because the person who it's for likes the suspense. You know who you are. And uh, they don't want me to reveal the grade, so that's fine, I'll happily adhere to that. But we have a Venom 3, uh, again, has this beautiful uh, extra Venom banner detail. But again, I won't reveal the grade because uh, we, we like the people who are, you know, placing these orders with us to see the grade first. So we'll leave that to them. So now we're moving on to some of the older stuff. So we've got here a Detective Comics uh, 308. This is from 1962. This was one that uh, I believe a customer was leaving and it was a present for their dad. Uh, it was the issue from the month and year they were born. Again, I'm not 100% sure if he wants me to reveal the grade, so I'm going to keep that covered for now. But uh, it came back really well. I was, I was really pleased with the grade of this, considering that this issue is 58 years old. So, Thomas, it's ready for you in store. Uh, and then these ones were all from, I believe, 1968. I had a customer who wanted a lot of issues from the year he was born and he also wanted them graded. So I'll just share those with you guys now. It's a real mixture of stuff. So from 1968, we have Flash 183. We have a 5.5 on that. So again, these issues are, you know, 52 years old. So again, grades are always gonna be affected by age, but I think that's a really, really good grade for, for such an, an older issue, you know, because a lot of these older issues will have changed hands many times. They won't be issues that, you know, someone bought and then kept it a vault for 50 years. So we have a rather nice, amazing Spider-Man, which is a graded five, again, from uh, November 1968. And that is Amazing Spider-Man number 66. So that's a beautiful one. Really, really like that myself. Despite my preference for DC, of course. What else have we got? We've got some more Marvel love here. So again, November 1968. We have Captain America 107, and this has been awarded a 6.5 grade. So really, really nice copy of that as well. What you'll notice with a lot of these older ones is they won't have white pages so readily. So you'll see like cream to off white pages, things like that, just under the um, under the grade that it's been awarded. What else have we got? We got a little bit of Batman love. I'm happy to say I already own this issue, so that's fine. Uh, this is Batman 206. Slightly lower grade with that one. It's been given a 3.5, but lovely cover that one. Batman walks the last mile. This is the end. And here we are 52 years later and Batman's stronger than ever. <laughs> uh, what else have we got here? So this will be one I know will appeal to a few guys in store given their collections. We've got Daredevil number 46. So again, November 1968. And this has been awarded a seven grade. So lovely cover on that one as well what else we got we got more dc stuff so we got world's finest comics 180 again from 1968 uh this has been awarded a 4.5 really cool cover as if superman would be able to overpower batman like that come on 
What else we got? We got Fantastic Four early stuff as well. So Stanley's story, Jack Kirby cover and art. I mean, that's just gorgeous right there alone. Um, so this one is, uh, again, November 1968. And this has been awarded a 4.5 grade as well. So beautiful there. That's the thing. Even with when these older issues get awarded sort of lower grades and stuff like that, they still present so brilliantly well because of the grading process. Uh, and it also... A, a, protects it from going any lower in grade and that kind of thing. We've got Incredible Hulk 109, again, November 1968. Uh, this was awarded a five, so nice uh, double cover appearance there. You've got Hulk and also Kazar as well. What else have we got? We've got three more to go. We've got Justice League of America. Uh, this is a Denny O'Neill story, Neil Adams cover. Absolutely glorious issue, this one. I love this for myself, actually. Uh, so again, November 1968, uh, it was awarded a 4.5, but just look at every member of the Justice League there. Beautifully illustrated, great Neil Adams cover. That is a thing of beauty. We've got my favorite character, I don't think. Uh, so we, again, we've got early Iron Man here. So we've got Iron Man number seven. This has been a graded uh, 5.0 as well. So there's that. And we have one last one which came through really, really well. For such an old issue, this is easily the best grade that any of the older issues got. And again, presents beautifully. Uh, this is Superman number 211. And this was awarded an 8.0. So grading is always available at the store. Uh, all the details are on the website. We've got the details in store now as well. Just get in touch with us if this is something we can organize for you. As I say, another 25 just got sent there now. They were for 25 customers, actually. None of uh, none of them were for me. But uh, the next shipment I'm sending off will have a few ones in there for me as well. So, But anyway, uh, that'll do it for us today, guys. As I say, I hope the future safe stuff was useful. Hope you enjoyed seeing the, the kind of stuff pull, being pulled out in the slabs. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all in store. So stay safe out there. Take care of each other. Take it easy.